Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Miss Gold. Today, I am bringing you 16 tips from a rank one Miss Weaver, and this is from my full complete guide up for 10.2.5. So, if you're interested in a guide, feel free. I'll put it in the description. I'll put it in one of the corners right now. But that is pretty much it. Hopefully, this is helpful. If you have any tips that you don't see in this video, please put it in the description. I'll have a pinned comment, and I will add any tips or tricks that I do not know about in that comment. And yeah, that is it. Hope everyone's fantastic day. Hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you later. And the first tip I would give you is to please macro taunt and put it on your bar. Taunt or provoke is the one of the best ways you can break CC. It has a pretty high skill cap when it comes to timing it, but if you could use, uh, there's also another macro I use. This is a more generic macro I would recommend over the other one. Um, this one will taunt arena one, two, three. This will break CC on you. It will literally break CC on you. I have had games where I taunted so many hunter pet hundred traps from their pets that they swapped to diamond ice because they didn't want their traps getting broken which is insane i i couldn't even believe that shovel game um so please you use it use that macro try to taunt it's an eight second cooldown use it off cooldown and try to get a trap you know or uh, you know a poly you can taunt water alley for poly anything try to just try to break any cc with it the second thing is your your port so you know you have two ports with escape from reality right now i don't know if this is a bug it might be but it's been in the game since shoutlands so i use it if you use a port and you have a skip from reality buff and you get kicked let's just say you get kicked while you have it up you could use your second port to get away okay now you didn't hear it from me and i definitely haven't been using it for the next for the past few years <laughs> but when they patch i'm gonna be sad but until that day you could use your second port from Escape from Reality while you're kicked. Speaking of getting kicked, you could use Dampen Harm while you're kicked. Okay? So, if you're getting trained, I will sometimes, like, if I'm at, like, 100% health, and I have Dampen Harm, and I see I'm starting to get off Sunday R, and they're going to want to, I see Storm Bolt or Kidney Shot, I'll try to get kicked, and then I'll Dampen Harm. And then normally they'll, like, Storm Bolt into it or Kidney into it, and then normally you're fine, which is great, because after the lockout, maybe you could port and all that. Next tip I would recommend is... Your common coalescent stacks. So in shuffle, this happens more in normal arena than shuffle because most of the time in shuffle, people just like go straight in. But it doesn't happen every time. Soothing Every time you soothing mist, the absorber of your next life cocoon is increased by 2%. This counts your soothe, your jade serpent statue soothing mist. So you're here. Can I just cancel the stacks? All right. So without my statue, I'm going up one stack at a time, right? One stack, four, five, six, seven. Okay, put my statue down and I start channeling Soothing Mist. It's going to go up two, four, six, eight, ten. So if there's a team, normal arena, shuffle, doesn't matter. That's like the arena just starts and they're just hiding behind a pillar. Or they're like, they don't know the strat they want to do. Please take advantage of that time to get a 50 stack life cocoon. All right, so I will, what normally what I do, and then also another trick with Soothing Mist, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but try to put two set or try to put Renewing Mist and then also try to put Soothing Mist on whoever you think they're going to go. That way your teammate gets the bonus healing from your Soothing Mist. Um, anyway, so try to get the 50 stacks, try to get the 50 stacks as soon as you can um, just by channeling on whoever you think they're going to go, which is really nice. Um, that way, when you need to use Life Cocoon, your first Life Cocoon in a shuffle or you know an arena, you have a big Life Cocoon. Because there's sometimes where teams will zer just, you know, zerg in and, you know, your life cocoon and it's only, what, what's the absorption on this? It's only 930, only 935k. But that's actually not big because of dampening um, rather than what, one one 1.8 million. So if a team chills behind a pillar, let them. Quickly get your stacks of comic coalescence from your statue and yourself. And that way that first life cocoon, they really can't go through it. The next tip is probably the most important tip on this list and that is the interaction between escape from reality and eminence so escape from reality makes it so you can port two times which is fantastic the eminence talent allows you to use transcendence while stunned and if you don't use transcendence while stunned it reduces the cooldown by 15 seconds now it is a there's weird interactions i don't know if it's a bug or not but the first one is if you use your second port when you're not stunned, it makes a cooldown of your transcendence 30 seconds. So that means if you port while stunned the first time, and then your second port you use outside of a stun, it will reduce the cooldown as if you never ported while stunned, if that makes sense. So if I port right now, and then I port again, 
the cooldown on my transcendence will be 30 seconds, which is what you want. If you, you use one port and then you just never use your escape from reality, the cooldown is going to be 35 seconds. And if you port the first time outside of a stun and then your second port is during a stun, you'll have a 45 second transcendence. Pretty much what this means is focus on your second port. Always, always, always port a second time when you're out of a stun. That means if you're, you know, in the middle of the map and you get kidney shot and you need to port, but you're stunned, port while you're stunned, which is fine, but make sure if they chase you, you always port when you're outside of a stun for your second port. That way you get the 30 second cooldown on your transcendence transfer rather than 35 seconds if you don't use escape from reality or 45 seconds if you use it while you're stunned. A passive that misweavers have that I didn't really talk about is Mystic Touch. And that's because we don't really play with melee these days because it's kind of hard to heal double melee. But you will be, obviously, in shuffle, you will be paired with melee DPS. And what this does is whenever you do damage to somebody, they will get a debuff called Mystic Touch where they will take 5%, not 15, 5% increased physical damage. So if you're playing with a Warrior, Feral Druid, even a Demo Lock, because a lot of the pets are melee, you want to try to maintain Mystic Touch. It is not a permanent debuff either. I think it lasts 15 seconds. I think it's a Monk passive. Um, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's 15 seconds. And you want to keep refreshing it. Yeah, it's 15 seconds. And Spinning Crane Kick, you know, Chi Wave is pretty good. Um, Crackling Jade Lightning, anything like that. Really, really important for getting that, that, um, that pass about so just try to be as min max as you can because every little bit matters in solo shuffle when it comes to getting silenced kicked anything like that do not panic because there's a lot of buttons that you can use to peel for yourself your teammate stop cc anything so a good example is when your root beams from a boomy sure you could just spin around in a circle when you're root beamed but you can actually do stuff the biggest thing is you can in-cap and you can leg sweep. So if the boomy is close enough to you, which sometimes they are, sometimes they come out of stealth and like they're like right on top of you, you can in-cap them when they're trying to cyclone you and then you can sweep them if they're close enough. You could also shadow meld if you're night elf. So that should get you out of any follow-up CC. Um, now, if you're silenced or anything like that, and there's other, you could also disarm. So if you're playing against a boomy warrior, you know, uh, Shadow Priest Warrior, you know, anything Shadow Priest, melee, boomy melee, you could also disarm the melee. So what you'll see me do when I'm root beamed and I'm like not on my gnome is I'll, first of all, I'll try to look for anything I can in-cap. I'll try to in-cap a DPS that we're not hitting. If that's not an option, I will try to disarm the melee DPS. Um, this will, that way this, you slow that, you slow their damage and you can, you can stop any follow-up CC on you. If you want to make Death Knights hate you, the first thing you're going to want to do is to put your statue down and hold your globals. Get your hots out when you can. But what the Death Knight go it looks like is they're going to try to hit somebody, try to hit this guy right here. And they're going to try to grip the healer, which is you, into them. Don't let that happen. Put your hots out. Try to stay far away. When you get gripped, you could port mid-grip. Reset your port. And when they use their second grip, you can port again. This is will infuriate many death knights because you completely negate their go because instead of having a cleave go they have a single target go and it makes it a lot easier for you to heal it if you're ever in a situation where you need to dispel a an affliction warlock's dots which i've seen a few of them but i haven't seen many of them you could use zen focus t to immune the silence which is kind of nice so what you'll see me do sometimes obviously depending on the situation but i'll zen focus t diffuse magic myself so i'm not silenced i'll probably use like a thunder focus uh, expel harm and then i'll dispel somebody else's if, if i have to you can dispel theirs and you don't get silenced for any of that you take the damage but you won't get silenced revival can be used while you're drinking and won't put you in combat so a little trick especially since this season where you're going to be going for drinks quite often in normal arena what you could do is you can port right shadow meld start drinking revival doesn't put you in combat so you could revival if your team gets low and then go back to drinking and you're fine so I've used this so many times, so many times in arena where teammates, like the enemy team thinks I like I'm back in combat because they see revival, but I'm actually not because it doesn't put me in combat. Disarm can do two really important things versus hunters and warriors. The first thing is our grapple weapon does not count as a melee 
disarm. So when a warrior parries, normally what they'll do is they'll try to parry the same time they're using burst cooldowns is sometimes, and they'll try to immune disarm from like rogues and other warriors. They cannot do that for a grapple weapon. Your grapple weapon does not work like that. So if you see a parry coming out from warrior and they also have it like using, you know, avatar at the same time, you still disarm it, which is fantastic. With hunters, they cannot kick if they are disarmed. So if you're coming into a BM hunter or a marks hunter and you're playing, you know, grab a weapon for, let's just say true shot or something. And they press true shot, even if they don't have it and you need to get some healing out, you could disarm them and then free cast because they can't kick you. You can use revival to immune the hunt damage and dot. So I don't know if this is known or I don't see it used too often, but whenever you see the hunt being casted by the demon hunter, if you press restore while they're mid air, it will completely negate their cooldown. And it's really, really good because most of the time it'll line up with the hunt. Try to use your restore to immune that hunt damage and dot, and that will completely negate a lot of their burst damage. Positioning with the Warlock, it actually just so happens that there's a Warlock right here. I find a lot of people struggle because their Warlocks always die, and they I've seen it in Monk Mondays and in Shuffles. The most important thing you can do when you're playing with a Warlock, and he takes his port away, is to play on their port. So what I'll do is I'll put my port on my Warlock's port, and then let's just say, for example, this is the Warlock port. You want to position here. You always want to position between the Warlock and, your port, and their port, always. That way, when they port you're still able to cast and it doesn't cancel your Soothing Mist, which means it doesn't cancel your Soothing Mist acts. So keep that in mind. Always try to get the mentality of staying, positioning between the Warlock and their port. How to deal with Salty Rogue Shadowy Duel. Now, for those of you who don't know, Shadowy Duel makes it so they take, it's just the Rogue and their target, but AoE spells work in Shadowy Duel for targets that aren't inside of it. So what that means is you could use spells like Revival, Chi, the Chi Cocoon from Yulon counts as an AoE spell, so you could use Restoral, and you could also use Rop and Leg Sweep. So, when you see a rogue use their Shadowy Duel, you'll see it a lot in Solo Shuffle. They're going to try to get a Trinket so they can Smoke Bomb the next go, or they try to Smoke Bomb, get a Trinket so they can Shadowy Duel. If you see the Shadowy Duel come out, just know, just find your teammate. You know, obviously, I try to get out of CC. Find your teammate. Normally, the first thing I'll do is I'll press Revival if I have it. Because that goes through Shadowy Duel, obviously. And it makes them immune to, mag to magical damage. And then I'll try to sweep or leg sweep. If, I, if I'll try to sweep or ring a piece on top of my teammate, depending on where they are. If, I'm, if they're too far away from me at the time, I will just ring a piece on top of them. And if I'm close enough to them, I will sweep on top of them. And that is normally enough to be able to get them out of CC. And then I can maybe like throw a Renewing Mist, you know, and use like a Thunder Focus Team Velvet Mist on them just to get some quick healing out once they come out of Duel. But keep that in mind, AoE spells go through Shadowy Duel. And my last tip for Mistweavers and for PvP in general is to just have fun and enjoy it. The most important part about playing video games is to enjoy it. Mistweaver is hands down, don't let anyone tell you differently, the most fun spec in the game. Whether we're good or bad, I will be playing it. A lot of other people might be playing it, but I will always be playing it. It is so fun to play. Try to find people you enjoy playing with and you will be PvPing a lot more. Trust me, I've tried to play with people that I, died, I did not enjoy playing with and I didn't even want to log on. But if you find people you genuinely enjoy playing with or you find a game mode that you enjoy doing, stick with it and you will quickly learn Miss Weavers and PvP. With that said, that is it for my tips and tricks. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And that is it for me. Hope everyone's a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.